lesson number seven now as far as our lessons on the home. Uh, we've looked at uh, some issues here uh, early on. Uh, we're down to the third section now. Uh, we come through uh, dealing with time and how you need to take time for each other, uh, for yourself, for the Lord. We talked about uh, testing now uh, a couple of weeks here and uh, counting the fact that your marriage, like any other, is going to be tested. Every Christian is tested. Marriages and homes are tested. And uh, sometimes the Lord tests us to prove us to him, uh, to ourselves. Sometimes he uh, lets us go through a couple things to stiffen us up a little bit and toughen us up. Uh, but uh, testings are they're pretty common. Uh, last time I think we talked about ways in which you're tested. Spiritually, you're going to be tested. Uh, whether or not uh, you're going to be obedient to the Word of God and what the Lord wants. He wants complete obedience to the Word of God in a marriage, in a husband and wife situation. That's what he's looking for, and that's what will work. Uh, you've, uh, we talked last time about the disobedient prophet in 1 Kings chapter 13. Started out right, backed down a little bit, was uh, kind of fooled somewhat, and paid a heavy price for it. Obedience to the Word of God is always the route to go. Uh, you'll be tested along the lines of who you're going to listen to, the devil. Uh, he'll try to get you to alter just a little bit. Slight switch, you know that, yea hath God said. Uh, and, of course, it did not work out. You're going to be tested on whether you listen to the Lord or you listen to your mate. And Adam listened to his wife. Uh, disaster is what followed. So you listen to the Lord at all times. Test things are going to be there, and uh, they're going to be tests along the lines of uh, sinful living, you know, and the temptation will be there. Uh, but just uh, count on the fact that if you do not pass the test spiritually, uh, disaster follows. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, uh, out of the garden they went, and uh, sorrow and travail and all those things connected with it. Uh, you want to make sure you keep things in line according to the Word of God. Storms come your way. And uh, storms come everybody's way. Uh, you take Job, he didn't have financial trouble, family trouble. Everything was in order, uh, at least at the start there. Uh, had quite a foundation, but the storm came in, took him down, way, way down. All right, again, test along the lines of, uh, oh, we'll call it uh, uh, money and sex, silver and sex, call it what you want to call it. Uh, but that's uh, kind of a, an area that creates a lot of problem in home. Finances get tight, and they're real tight sometimes. No breathing room. Next thing you know, everybody just clawing at each other, aggravated. Uh, they can't get along. Uh, and the way you solve something like that is, you, number one, you've got to uh, set up a budget. If you got $100 a week coming in, and you set it up for $100 a week, not $200 a week. Uh, if you got $150, then you go accordingly. But uh, you don't overspend. And without a budget, you know, you're going to grab for this, grab for that, go down to Walmart, and uh, you're going to grab uh, this off the shelf, and I need this, and grab this off the shelf. Next thing you know, uh, you're under the gun. Nobody has room to breathe, and we got home troubles. All right, uh, financial troubles, uh, you've got to have a budget. Uh, you uh, got to honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase. Do that. Uh, you got to give bountifully, and then the promises of the Word of God are, God will eventually give back to you. He'll be bountiful with you as well. You can't go through being a skin flint and get it by. Okay, along those lines, again, uh, what to do. Uh, sometimes you, uh, you don't claim bankruptcy. You sell the oil. You pay the debt. Second Kings chapter 4, verse number 7. You pull your horns in. Uh, if your wife's got to work a little bit, then she can go work for a while. You count the cost. You don't just, uh, you know, see what looks the best. Uh, count the cost, Luke chapter 14. The disciples were told, count the cost. All right, so those things now. But most of all, honor the Lord so the Lord can honor you. Standard problems being uh, money and sex. I heard that many years ago. Uh, having pastored 32 years like I have, I find that to be uh, probably the problems, uh, the major problems, where they come from. Uh, so you want to be careful along those lines, okay? Uh, along the lines of uh, the other mate now, you want to be sure that you uh, do not stay apart, as the Bible calls it, apart, uh, uh, one from another uh, any length of time. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 now. We'll look at the Bible here a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves a fasting and prayer, and watch this, 
and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. All right, then it's important that a husband and wife stay together. It's important that uh, they do not, uh, you know, get aggravated, get miffed, uh, drift apart. Uh, everything's going to fall apart at that point. Uh, you might, for one reason or another, have to be apart a little bit, a little while, uh, but you want to keep it a short time. If you're apart, that leaves an opening for a third party. And uh, once you got that involved, then you have a situation uh, that becomes almost an impossibility. All right, so the idea being uh, you two are supposed to be one flesh. Uh, the idea being that a wedding is like a welding. And uh, that being true, the Lord wants you to come together again. Do not stay apart any length of time. Or the temptation comes your way. And uh, sometimes the temptation uh, gets the better end of things. When it does, uh, most of the time it blows. Go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, and again along these lines, uh, there are times whenever things uh, maybe get worked out. Those times are rather rare when it gets uh, this difficult. Uh, but in verse number 8 said, He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And cause for it and reason for it following in verse number 9. Uh, but it's as though that uh, even a situation like that can be worked out. It, uh, but it's got to take somebody that uh, has a heart for God, heart for the Word of God. And, uh, of course, the hardened heart's got to be turned around. Uh, but uh, if somebody has a hard heart, they never accept it. And most of the time, that's the way it goes. Things usually blow apart. So the safe way is make sure that you don't stay apart any longer than you absolutely have to. Come together again, or the devil is going to tempt you. Okay, now another way in which we are tempted is along the lines of sickness. And uh, take your Bible now and go back to Deuteronomy chapter 25. And you want to count on the fact that whenever you are down that way and whenever you're in a weakened condition, you're going to be attacked. You say, well, who'd ever attack somebody when they're down? Well, you know who's going to do it. Uh, the devil's going to do it. He's going to do it by way of the flesh there. And uh, In Deuteronomy 25, verse number 17, the Bible says, Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye came, were come forth out of Egypt, how he met you by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble, underline that, behind thee, when thou was faint, underline that, and weary, underline that, and he feared not God. And you can count the fact whenever you're in a weakened condition, you will be attacked. All right, now along those lines, uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, creates a problem because uh, doctors are not cheap. Uh, I, put, uh, I put thousands of dollars in the situation I've got with my face. And uh, if church didn't have the medical account, I'd have a hard time making a go of it. Uh, I do appreciate all that's done for me along those lines. It's enabled me to travel the state trying to find an answer. Last uh, Thursday, it was almost homecoming week up in uh, Cleveland. Peggy was there. Abby Kipp was there. All of us getting our IVs up there. And I went to the doc, and uh, he said, told me about a method. I said, well, I know it stops, but I want something more permanent, not just a temporary stop. And I said, why don't we try the allergy testing and go that route, perhaps be more permanent. So we went through an unusual testing, uh, the allergy testing, and uh, he said, resist. When he said resist, I, you know, I resist. And he's pushing, pushing, you know, and finally got, you know, and he said, again, he says, resist, you know, and I resist. And finally he calls the nurse in, and uh, he pulled a tandem job. He said, some people are hard and some people are easy, and uh, you're hard. <laughs> so when they say resist, what do you do? You know, you, you give all you got there. Anyhow, when he got done going through this, uh, at least three trays, all these little different vials here, he says, yep, I can help you. And uh, so, you know, will he, won't he? I don't know. Uh, so far, nothing better. Rather, I don't know if it got worse, but uh, I've had a few spots that's been all right. Uh, but uh, nothing, you know, lasting at all. Uh, look at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 26. All right, this is a woman, verse 25, had an issue of blood 12 years. So I've got my, uh, coming up December 15th, that'll be my fifth year anniversary of fighting this battle. It's a long haul. 
uh, 12 years, wow, can't imagine it, had suffered many things in many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. And of course the Lord, he took care of the problem. Uh, instantly the Lord can do that. Uh, but uh, just along the lines of uh, you know and I know, the doctors, they, they know how to charge. Uh, and so, you know, somebody gets sick and next thing you know, uh, whereas we had everything under control, we had things, you know, this works, this works, this works, and uh, things are, you know, within reason, very much within reason. Now, all of a sudden, here's 50 bucks, there's 100 bucks, there's 150 bucks, there's another test, here's this, here's that, and now we find ourselves under the gun. All right, but you want to realize that that's just a test. And uh, whenever it's a test of your marriage, whenever somebody's sick in the family, and it creates a difficulty, uh, you want to make sure that we handle it only as a test and we do not let this difficulty uh, get us apart. Now, I look at it this way, getting, given enough years, uh, you all going to be tested this way. Uh, I've had to be treated uh, ways I don't like to be treated. Uh, you say, well, what's that? Uh, sometimes I've been treated just about like a baby and uh, I don't like that. No man likes that. Uh, but uh, last few years, uh, I guess I've got nine surgeries in. Uh, you know, obviously, you're going to need some help. And if I didn't have the help, I'd, I'd uh, have a difficult time. But, okay, your marriage likewise. Uh, mine started at 49 years of age. I went for uh, hernia surgery that just about took my life. So it was supposed to be in and out in one day. And uh, next day I was kept over. And next thing you know, I was kept in there for three weeks and just about didn't even get out. Uh, that was the start of the thing. And uh, I think ever since then, it's just been a little this, a little bit of that. And uh, so the years go on. And given enough time, it'll be that way with you. If it's you as a man, uh, then the woman's got to come through. If it's the woman, then the man's got to come through. Uh, but your marriage is going to be tested. Eventually, it'll be tested along those lines. Maybe it'll be a child. You never know how it goes. Uh, but there will be the test that way. I knew of a family that uh, had a lot going, had a home paid for, had money in the bank, uh, husband got real sick, uh, they lost everything and eventually lost him. I've heard all kinds of situations like that. I knew a fellow that I saw one time that uh, he used to play golf every day and uh, his wife got sick, got in a nursing home, he spent every day in the nursing home, rolling her up and down the hallways and took care of her that way and more power to him. have to appreciate somebody like that. I think of my father-in-law, Pop Gillespie, when uh, my mother-in-law got sick, was in the hospital, and uh, uh, didn't get out. Uh, she had never been in the hospital until she was 80 years of age and had an accident. That's the first thing I ever put her in. But she finally went out at about 83 or 84, 85, whatever it was there. Last six weeks, she was in a coma in the hospital, and Shirley's dad sat by that bedside till finally it got him down. And mom finally passed on. He was in the hospital, and she was in the hospital. He's like five rooms up the hallway from her. Uh, but he did stay by as long as he possibly could. And that's what you would always want to do. When the test comes, and uh, it would be sooner or later. I mean, we're not invincible. And uh, she isn't. You aren't. Uh, and so you want to make sure that you stand by and count it as a test of your marriage. And I'm going to prove that I really loved her like I said I did. And I'm going to prove to him that I love him like I said I did. A test. All right, the tests, they come by every way. Along the lines of sorrows. Uh, sometimes you have that. Brother T. Ross told me, uh, he said that uh, there was a year uh, that we buried five people in my family. And the last one was his dad. And he said, uh, I had to go and tell my mother that uh, his dad had passed on. He said, hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. And sometimes you have those kind of things, and they're difficult. And uh, yet uh, those things sometimes, uh, they just happen. You take Job, he lost everything, lost his children as well. Uh, you take the woman, a uh, great woman, Second Kings chapter 4, verse number 8. Uh, her son died. And of course, uh, Elijah is able to do uh, uh, a, a job there, Elisha. Uh, so, you know, look at those kind of situations, but uh, those things can happen. There's always going to be one thing or another. If it's not finances, it can be sickness. If it's not sickness, it can be uh, Lord only knows what. It's all out there, and it's out there in every marriage. Your marriage, I don't care who you are, and I don't care how well you're doing, it'll be tested eventually somewhere down the line, and you want to handle it as only a testing. Sometimes you're tested along the lines of sons and daughters. 
and it starts about the time they reach all around 14 years of age. And I've seen it over and over. By the time they get that uh, around that age, and they want to run, and they want to run, you know, on the wild side, uh, then that's where the pressure is. And I've seen a, a lot of fellows with all kind of convictions, major convictions. At that point, the problem is the preacher, the problem is this, the problem is that, and they're gone. And the reason they're gone is because the pressure is now on and uh, they're not going to fight the battle. They're going to, you know, get in kind of a backslidden condition and just let the child run wild. And so doing, uh, they're going to destroy their lives. You want to make sure that uh, even when things are difficult and the child gives you fits, uh, you want to make sure that you handle it. Uh, you don't back down. Uh, you do your very best to try to keep things in line. And you can only go so far, understand that, but you do your best and uh, try uh, and go the second mile away to keep things the way they should be. Now I'll take your Bible and go back to 1 Samuel. And 1 Samuel chapter 2, you have Eli, and Eli, uh, he's the priest there, but, uh, but Eli seemed like as though that he bogged down when it came to his sons. And the Bible says here in verse 22, 1 Samuel 2 verse 22, now Eli was very old and heard of all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women. Notice that. That assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh, apparently they, uh, uh, because of who they were, uh, they had pretty, pretty much an open field there. Uh, and the Bible says there in verse 23, And he said unto them, why do, you, why do you such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear you make the Lord's people to transgress, and they certainly did that. But it's as though he just said, uh, you know, he didn't put no clamps on. It's just as, you know, I hear what's going on. It's not right. It's as though, man, knock it off, you know. Uh, but Eli didn't come through that way. And uh, the result being, uh, his sons go out, he goes out, and it's all over real quick. Now, by contrast, go to 1 Samuel chapter 8, and Samuel had the same problem. Obviously, it is a problem. Obviously, it's a common problem. You may have it someday. Lord only knows. All right, but uh, whereas Eli knew it, didn't clamp down, apparently Samuel did what he could, though they did not listen to him. All right, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, uh, verse 13. So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath, and the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines, and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel. Things are going good as far as the nation's concerned. And uh, Samuel's an outstanding judge. Uh, Samuel never worked anybody. You couldn't buy him off. Uh, chapter... Uh, 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 12, uh, Samuel makes statement back there that, you know, uh, verse number 3, uh, I haven't been bribed, haven't got in anybody's pocketbook at all. Uh, he was a good uh, judge there. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and Judge Israel and all those places. And his return uh, was to Ramah, for there uh, was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he uh, built uh, an altar. Uh, he was good. He was a, a good judge. Uh, but uh, you notice the, his sons didn't seem to come on as well as he did. Verse 1, chapter 8. came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. And uh, the name of the firstborn was Joel. name of the second, Abiah. Uh, they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after the lucre, took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel to Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. And Samuel's tore up about it. And the Lord told Samuel in so many words, Ease up on yourself, Samuel. Uh, you're not the problem. Uh, the problem is they don't want me. It's not that they don't want you. and It's not because of the problem with the sons. Uh, like uh, Eli had a problem with his sons, Samuel had a problem with his sons, 
but apparently Samuel must have pushed himself to try to correct it best he could because he's not condemned for it and it's as though ease up on yourself I'm the problem they just don't want me the Lord tells him uh, and they don't want me to be king over them so you're gonna have those kind of problems uh, seem like as though a certain age uh, uh, there is the difficulty with the flesh I almost hate to see it come on uh, those terrible teenage years and uh, but you got to stay in the battle mothers and dads you've got to stay in the battle you got to try to keep things lined up as best you possibly can and you've got to stay together in that issue all right whenever you find out that we're dealing with a test uh, whatever it might be finances or uh, the children or whatever that test may be uh, here's ways to handle the testings number one do not fall apart and don't drift apart don't let the pressure or the tension get you going separate ways or split you up or keep you apart all right number two don't blow up but control yourself and adapt to the situation and it's amazing how much you're going to have to do that i mean you can fly off the handle doesn't change anything at all uh, you can lose your control of yourself it's not going to alter nothing uh, you're going to have to you know hold her down uh, you're going to have to be real careful uh, to uh, stay in control of the situation there, especially in control of yourself. And you may have to adapt a little here, a little there, but do not blow up. All right, when you have a test, testings come to your marriage. Don't take it out on somebody else. And it seems like as though that uh, a lot of times the blame is always pushed another way. You're the problem. Uh, no, it's like Bob Jones Sr. said, no doubt the trouble's with you. And you want to handle it that way. Don't be pushing the blame off this way, that way, it's her, it's him. Uh, do not do that. Uh, sometimes people get that way and they take uh, their difficulty and their aggravation out on the one they love the most, the ones at home, and you want to make sure you do not do that. Okay, be sensible. Handle things the spiritual way. I look at it as what does the Bible say about this issue and then determine I'm not going to let this problem split my home. Go to the book of Job and look at Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23 and verse number 10. But he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me. There's a testing. I shall come forth as gold. There's somebody thinking spiritual and sensible. It's a testing. It's a trial. And I know the trials don't last forever. The Bible said back in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse number uh, 9, after you've suffered a while, it's going to uh, st strengthen, establish, and settle you. Trials do not last forever. When you're in the middle of them, you think they're never going to end. But they do have an end to them. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept. All right, that's a sensible thing. I'm going to do right. I don't care if anybody else does right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to keep on doing right. I'll do right till I drop my tracks. That's the spiritual way to think. That's a sensible way to think. And you know that'll work. Now, when you're in the midst of trials, you're not thinking, you know, the fog comes in. Uh, but stop and think. Pull back. You know, a little bit of sense, a little bit of spirituality. You know what works. You know what God will honor. All right, 12. Neither have I kept going back to the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. All right, so you handle it that way. You're sensible. You're going to be spiritual about it. You're going to handle it as a trial and a trial only. And I absolutely will not let the devil get his foot in the door. And I'm not going to let him split up my home because of this trial. All right, then you uh, think it through and uh, you get busy and do some praying and do a lot of praying and you ride the ship out. Like a fellow uh, said one time, he said, uh, this has already been proven. And he said, uh, I realize it is but a test and uh, a trial and I'm determined that I'm gonna come forth as gold. Now you do likewise. You realize this is a test. This is a trial. And uh, Lord's already proven that what I've got going, he's honored it. It's what he wants. And uh, there's no doubt about that. So then I know this is only a trial. Uh, likewise, 
you uh, keep a tender heart, you let the Lord direct your way, you know if you're in the will of God, you got something going, then this is a trial. And handled only as a trial. All right, now, if you handle trials right, this is what you expect. I look in Job chapter 23, and this time verse number 16. Job 23, verse number 16. Uh, you know that the trial is sometimes uh, it's going to bring you out uh, closer to the Lord, and uh, it's going to make your heart tender like it's supposed to be. It'll break the hardened heart. It'll get you in a situation where God can use you again. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. You know what Job was like before that? You read early in chapter there? He said, uh, I've got an argument. I've got an argument against the Lord. I like to argue with the Lord. I'm in an argumentative mood. And uh, he argued with his friends back and forth and forth and back. I mean, there's one for me and one for you. And uh, that's all I read, chapter after chapter. And he got to the point where he thought, I'd, I'd argue with the, I'd like to see him face to face and argue with him. Uh, but that don't work. That never works. And uh, but when that thing's all said and done, uh, his tune had changed immensely. And look at it again, 16. For God maketh my heart soft. And it's not that he wants you to be a, you know, a panty waist or anything like that. Uh, it's just that uh, you've got to be tender towards God and towards things of God. All right, again, uh, you handle testing sensible, spiritual, and handle them right. You'll be stronger. Your marriage will be stronger. Go through something together. Uh, your love for each other always deepens a little bit more. All right, as a church family, if you've gone through anything at all with this church, then it seems like as though that it just draws you together. Uh, in a family, likewise. Uh, it should, I guess, cause you going through the deep water together. It should cause you to, uh, what can I say, to draw closer to the Lord, but closer to each other as well. It should actually deepen uh, your relationship with the Lord and deepen your relationship one with another. Okay? Uh, what you learn is you learn that, you know, man, I have made big things out of things that really are nothing. And uh, when you get hit with something heavy, you realize that, why did this bother me? Why, this was small. This was nothing. Man, I treated it like it was a, an issue. I shouldn't have even given a time of day. And you come to realize that little things, they don't count. They don't matter. They come and go. You'll forget them by tomorrow morning. Uh, if you'll handle them the way they should be and let those little things just be an aggravation and then let it go. Let loose of it. Forget it. And that's all it amount to, be that kind of a thing. Or you can take little things and, uh, you know, you can make a big deal of them. Next thing you know, you're going to have something big to face. You're not going to be able to handle it. So treat little things as being little nothings. And you know how kids are? Kids are... Uh, well, Rhonda, she took care of uh, uh, Phil's boys. You ever see those boys? All they do is tussle. I think that's all they know. They like to wrestle, tussle, and uh, they do the same thing with each other. She says it's kind of funny, and here's what they do. Man, they're clawing, they're wrestling, they're flopping, they're rolling, they're doing all that. And two minutes later, they're playing with each other like they never had a problem in the world. You know how you need to handle some problems? Same way. It's a little thing. And, you know, next morning, get up and sober. You know, you don't make a big deal over it. It's, just, it's nothing. Be like the kid that just, you know, he forgets in a heartbeat. Ten minutes later, forgets all about it. Uh, those, you know how it is. The, the parents are always a problem, not the kids. I mean, the kids, I mean, they, they forget by tomorrow morning. And you need to, likewise, take the little difficulties, let them be little, and uh, continue on. Most really are not that significant. Uh, there will be the heavy-duty situations you'll have to face, but most are not really that, in, uh, that significant. They're mostly insignificant. They're little. They don't mean a lot. And if you'll handle things right, your love will deepen for each other, for the Lord. You will come through the other side stronger than you were when you went in, and your marriage will be stronger as well, and your faith will increase as well. And you'll have a testimony. And you'll have a testimony that's, it'll be real. And you've been through the battle, and you've been through the wars, and 
Now you got a testimony for the Lord. And people will say, what? You're still trusting God. And you're going to be listened to. You're going to be heard. Now go back to the book of Joshua. Look at Joshua chapter 21. And in Joshua chapter 12, there's a list of the battles that uh, Joshua and the children of Israel had to face. Uh, they go right in the middle of that land there. They go to the south. They go to the north. They're just battling everywhere. Uh, so much so, it says that uh, there were 31 kings in all that they had to fight and do battle with. That is a lot of battling. All right, now I go to chapter 21. Chapter 21, and uh, Joshua's about to wrap up his life. Uh, in Joshua chapter 21, verse number 45, he's got a testimony. And his testimony is, There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Now, this is not somebody talking up front and saying, Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, if you can really trust God. This is somebody who's been through the mill. This is somebody who's been in the battle. This is somebody who's been in the war, you might say, and comes out and says, God did not fail. Not one word, not in the least. He did not fail of any good thing that he had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Now, do you think somebody's going to hear a person like Joshua? They've been through it. They've been through the wars. They know what it's all about. And when he says, you can trust God, then you're going to get a, I mean, you're going to get the hearing just like he did. Now, go to chapter 23 and look at verse number 14. Joshua 23, verse number, well, let's see, 23, yeah, verse number 14. Joshua 23, verse number 14. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth, looking back on his life now. And he's at 110. And you know, in all your hearts and all your souls, that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you, all are come to pass unto you. Not one thing hath failed thereof. That's quite a testimony. And that's a pretty amazing testimony that he would say the Lord is beyond anything I could expect it in so many words. That's saying the Lord's perfect. He never failed, not one time. And somebody's been through what he'd been through. You read the book of Joshua there, and all you're looking at is a whole lot of battling going on, and the man be able to say that, that's a testimony somebody's going to listen to. And you go through the wars, and you go through the battles, and you say, but the Lord got me through. But the Lord did not fail. But the Lord was my fortress and my strength, and my shield, and you'll get the year. Somebody hasn't been through it, and they say, oh yeah, now you can trust God. But they don't know. They have never been through anything. That's a different story when somebody's been through it, and comes out and says, you can trust him. You can trust him, I mean, with everything you got. You can trust him all the days of your life. You will see the Lord come through. Your faith will be increased. Your testimony will be heard. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, you'll have a testimony that'll be real, and it'll be, a, it'll be a testimony of praise. Hebrews 13, verse number 15. Uh, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And some other things were said in verse number uh, 16. Uh, but it's as though that you'll, you'll be able to praise the Lord You'll always, all your life, say, Lord, you're good. Lord, man, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even have a home. Lord, in no way could I possibly. We could not have got through the deep water we faced. We could not have got through the testing, the trials, and the storms. and Never could we. We just couldn't possibly have made it. Lord, here we are still in love. Here we are. Our love is deepened. Here we are, Lord. Man, can't believe how good you are. And you're going to get out the other side and look at things that way, and you'll be praising God forevermore that he has kept your home together. The sacrifice of praise to God continually. All right, there are some things that, uh, and sometimes, and some people that have been through what you've been through, I'm sure. Uh, there's no temptation uh, that comes your way that's uh, not common, common to man. Comes uh, different people. Somebody's had it, somebody's handled it. And uh, so if others have... I uh, had difficulty and handled it, you can as well. 
Uh, when I was in Pensacola and had to work and uh, go to school and study and but got whittled down to nothing by the third year, uh, there were people that had seen that. One time a friend of mine was, uh, was going on for some additional work and it was, the situation was so extensive that uh, they, they didn't even allow you to, I believe, to work. They didn't want you to work until you finally got your, uh, I think it was a doctorate he was going for. But he pastored a church and he worked because he had a family and wrote me a letter and said, Brother Art, uh, they tell me not to do this, but uh, I realize it can be done. Others have done it. It can be done. And with kind of a slight insinuation, I've seen you go through the works, and so I know it can be done. You can, you know, you can stretch yourself for a period of time and get it done. And uh, likewise, you think of those who've been through it, and uh, Lord willing, you know, will do this or that. You don't know how things will go from day to day. You may have a test, a major test, and you may have before the midnight hour today. You just know that eventually, Lord Terran is coming. You're going to be tested. Your home and your marriage are going to be tested. And you want to determine I'll come forth as gold. I think of a friend of mine whose uh, sister and her husband had a home paid for and $50,000 in the bank. They had saved that much. But the illness came. The sickness was severe. And two years later, they had to sell the house. They could not afford to even keep the house. The money was gone. The house was gone. The home or the marriage was still intact. It can be done. You haven't faced anything like that. I hope you never have faced anything like that. But it can be done. I heard of a fellow at 70 years of age. Uh, he and his wife had, uh, they had, uh, had a nice little nest egg stashed up there. She got Alzheimer's. Uh, he cared for her for a number of years. Finally had to put her in a nursing home. You know how much nursing homes are now? $5,000 a month. And every pill you pay for, and sometimes it gets up to $6,000 per month. You pay for every little thing that is done. And that is today's prices. You know, you work hard to save a few bucks and hit a go and nothing flat. Uh, another fellow I knew, his wife, four and a half years after they were married, she got sick. She was sick for 17 years. The sickness that she had, it drew her up into a little bundle, you might say, tightened her up, drew her together. And I've seen that fellow carry her around in his arms like a baby. Every time I see him, respect. I mean, I respect him absolutely and always will. I have no idea what's going on. Don't see him that often anymore. But you have to respect somebody like that. Now, I'm talking about 17 years of fighting the battle and staying in there and handling the situation all the way through and all the way out. Others have done it. It can be done. A fellow I knew one time, I used to see this fellow, and he told me, and he'd say, oh, yeah, man, these are the best golf clubs you can buy. And, oh, yeah, this is good. And, oh, yeah, this is the way you do it. And it was golf, golf, golf. But the time came when it wasn't golf, and he didn't get in two or three rounds a year because he had to tend for his wife, tend to his wife, and he did it. It can be done. And when the testing comes your way, you want to realize, I'm going to handle it right. And you don't lose control. You stay calm. You consider it. Make a list. Put some things down on paper. Uh, and... Uh, handle things the right way, the spiritual and the sensible way to do it, and then give God time, and eventually the Lord will come through in your behalf. Your love for each other will be deepened. Your marriage will be stronger. Your testimony will be stronger. Your faith will increase. Everything will be better because you've handled the trial and the testing and handled it right. All right, now the next set. Tendencies of our day and time. All right, we talked about the top spot. Uh, we've talked about time, talked about testings. Now we'll talk about tendencies. In the last days of the church age, tendency is going to be to back away. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and look at verse number 1. First Timothy 4, verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, all right, so this will be the last days of the church age, 
Latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. All right? A seducing spirit. That's going to be the prevailing trend in the last days before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And you know that from the Bible. That's what you're told. All right, what does a seducing spirit do? It stays on you and stays on you and stays on you until finally it gets an ear. Stays on you, stays on you, stays on you until finally it gets you to make a move the wrong direction. That's a seducing spirit. You know what a godless, seductive woman is? She stays on somebody until finally, you know, uh, she gets, uh, gets what she wants. Uh, but anyhow, along these lines, the spirit's going to be, uh, the tendency's going to be to try to get you to cut your convictions and cut back on this, and you're being too hard, and this is man the 21st century, you're living clear back 200 years ago, and uh, that's seducing spirit. And you say, this isn't right, and you back away from it. And next thing you know, they put it out there again, and you say, it's still not right, and you back away from it. And they put it out there again. And then finally you say, well, you know, after all, maybe it isn't too bad. Have you ever heard that term? I hear it. You've heard it. Well, maybe it's not too bad. The Bible says it's wicked. It's wicked. Yeah, I mean, you can't turn it any other way. That's what the Bible says about it. It's evil. It's evil. Uh, but, you know, they, uh, the seducing spirit puts it on you until finally, you know, it gets you to think, well, maybe it really isn't so bad. And after all, everybody's doing it. And you've heard that, and I've heard that. And I remember as a kid, uh, you know, trying to use that for an argument. And uh, that doesn't work. That's the dumbest thing in the world you could do. I mean, you can mess up, mess up your life, and everybody else is connected with you uh, for good just because you, you know, get on that train of everybody's doing it. But that's the seducing spirit, you know, make you think, well, hey, you know, and and just talk to you. Everybody's doing it. That's not so bad. Everybody's doing it. Look at those guys. Man, they're going out there having a good time. You're going home. And uh, why don't you just go with them? Why don't you go with them one time, you know? That's the seducing spirit. All right, seducing spirit. Uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, in our day it was booze, now it's drugs. So, it's, so what's the difference? You know, one's bad as the other. And, and, you know, just try to back it down. Ease it off. Not that bad. Uh, always something along those lines and keep at it until finally you accept sinful living and even accept it in your life and in your home. And once you get that idea that, you know, everybody's doing it, not so bad. And, uh, you think about certain things that at one time they were punishable as a crime. They're not that way anymore. You think about certain sins that were a, a reproach many years ago and uh, you had uh, like a chain around your neck identifying it uh, it's not that way anymore not at all uh, and so you know that seducing spirit just keeps hammering you hammering you coming back trying to you know tempt you trying to get you to lead you astray and act like it's not so bad when all the time it's just as wicked and evil as what it's always been and some of those things that are winked at now and treated as though they are absolutely ho-hum, they're nothing at all. In the Bible, they were deathly situations, and you paid for it with death. Over in Iran, they got a tower over there that uh, for 900 years, if somebody was caught in a certain act, they were thrown off the top of that tower and killed. In the Bible, they were stoned. In the Bible, they were burned for some of those things until they died. There was a heavy price to be paid for. Nowadays... Somebody goes off, it's almost like as though they can get votes by saying, well, look, you know, vote for me. I'm wicked like you are, you know. And uh, they're getting all their wicked and sinful deals that go on. Uh, but that's the trend of the last days. Cut your convictions. So what? Everybody's doing it. It's not really that bad. And you want to be sure that you stay true blue to the Word of God all the way. The tendencies of the last days. Cut your convictions. Disobedient to parents. Second Timothy chapter 3. Tendency, the last day. And because of that, uh, the parents, they are afraid to discipline someone anymore. I knew a fellow one time, his son said, I'm going to call a crisis center. He said, you wouldn't even want to call a crisis center. I mean, he put the, he put the fear of God in that boy. It's as though, if you even think about calling that crisis center, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe this floor up with you. And, of course, uh, he didn't do it. A lot of talk. But you got to learn to discipline them. And I'll talk to you about it next time. The earlier, the better. The sooner they learn that there is a punishment when they don't do right, uh, the better off it will be for you, for your home, for them, and the better chance they have of getting saved, knowing that disobedience is going to be very costly. Okay, tendencies of our day and time in the home. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the word of God, and I pray, Lord, that